Hello and welcome back for part two of our digestive talk. My name is Susan Johnson. If you didn't meet me in video number one yet, uh, I am a certified natural health practitioner. I'm a certified biofeedback technician, have been in the health and wellness space for over 25 years, and I am the author of the 28-Day Healthy Reboot. Um, this is a... Um, interactive journey to figure out how food and lifestyle affect your health and uh, I run these several times a year and they're a lot of fun to do. It's a great opportunity to learn more about how what you do with your lifestyle and what you eat affects your body. Now in part one, I want to do a quick recap. Oh, before I do that, let me say this. Remember that anything I say today is for educational purposes only. I am not here to diagnose, treat, or cure anyone. I'm just here to pique your interest to learn more about why healthy digestion is so important and what healthy digestion is. Um, I'd like to do a quick recap of what we did on our first video. So our first video, we talked about the fact that all disease begins in the gut. This is a famous quote by Hippocrates hundreds of years ago, and he is absolutely right, and every day they prove it more and more. We know that a healthy digestive system breaks down the foods that you eat into its smallest parts inside the small intestine so that the body can reabsorb them and use them to build healthy nails, skin, hair, hormone health, you know, uh, muscle health, uh, everything, metabolism, everything that you need. And that's breaking them down to things like fats, amino acids, and sugars. We know that there's a lot of dis-ease that is associated with bad digestion. This can be anything from as simple as gas and bloating to uh, more things like brain fog or inflammation. It can lead to IBS, IBD, and those type of things, and it goes on from there, and we'll recap that in a second. We also learned that 70 to 80% of our immune system is located inside our gut. And if we don't have a healthy gut, we're not going to have a healthy immune system. So important today with all that's going on, we've spent the last year worrying about our immune system. You working with your gut is going to help you improve that immune system. That immune system, all those immune cells, they work in conjunction with our microbiome. These are the millions of uh, bacteria, fungus, yeast, and worms that live with inside us. They help us breathe, they help us think, they help keep us happy. 95% of our serotonin, which is our a neurotransmitter and our happy hormone, is produced inside our gut. And if we don't have a healthy microbiome and a good immune system, we're not going to have a good serotonin level, which is going to affect how we feel. Again, depression and anxiety, very closely associated with a healthy gut. One thing I didn't mention yesterday, which I probably should have, I didn't mention virus in here. It is now believed that we actually have a virome, um, just like we have a microbiome system in our brain and on our skin and in our uh, digestive system. It's believed that our viruses inside of us, we all have them, actually have their own virome, and they're now starting to look at them separately from the microbiome. Um, I'm sure I'll get some questions on that. And then the diseases that are often associated with not having a healthy gut, I mentioned some of them, but there are some really more uh, dangerous ones. Um, we're going to talk about things like GERD, diverticulus, and Crohn's. Those are some of your, your best celiac disease. There's another one. Um, and then your autoimmune diseases, hypothyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, MD, MS, and then the biggies, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and cancer can all lead back when you trace them back, can all trace back to not having a healthy digestive system. So, so important for your overall health. Now, don't laugh when I turn this. Um, today, we're going to talk about what healthy digestion actually is. And you're going to see that I am not an artist. Um, I have drawn here the body. Yes, this is my picture of my body. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about what digestion actually is. So, what is digestion and where does it start? So. First of all, let's take a look. This is the this is uh you know the this part of the body. This would be our liver. So our liver sits up in here. Our stomach sits in here. Our small intestines, our large intestines, and leading out of the body. So this is the basics that we'll talk about. But digestion actually starts long before your food gets to your stomach. Digestion actually starts when you start to smell. When you smell chocolate chip cookies, or you go buy a, a burger joint, or you know some, your mom's cooking something. When you start to smell, that's when digestion begins. Digestion, smelling, will then lead to your mouth watering. When your mouth waters, it starts to release a few of those enzymes that are going to help you break down the food that you eat. When you eat the food, so say you eat a cheeseburger or a salad, 
that chewing action that you use to break down that food is going to also release more enzymes. This is all going to be part of starting the breakdown of your food. And it's really important when you are chewing that you pay mindful attention as to how you chew your food. Your food should be like cake batter by the time you swallow it. A lot of us today are used to eating on the run, eating fast, we eat big bites, we chew a few and we swallow down. You need to think about that when you're chewing. You want it to be like cake batter. And for those of you who do a lot of protein shakes, smoothies, and those kind of things, same thing goes for you. You want to make sure you're chewing your smoothie, chewing that so that it releases those enzymes to help break everything down so it can get down to the small intestines, be broken down to its smallest parts, and then be absorbed by the body. So we're going to drink your food and chew your smoothie. Very important. So. Once we've chewed our food well, we're going to swallow it, it goes down through the esophagus, and it's going to drop into the stomach. I like to think of the stomach like a rock tumbler. Um, when I was a kid, I had a rock tumbler. You took like uh, any kind of rock you found around, you put it in the rock tumbler with different chemicals, and it tumbled for a certain amount of time, and when you opened it up, you had these beautifully polished rocks. Think of your stomach the same way. You swallow your food down and it's going to go in with all that stomach acid and it's going to turn around, working with those enzymes to break down your food even more. And just like your rock tumbler that has a timer on it, your stomach has a timer on it as well. It's like a pop-up chicken. When it gets to a certain point, it heads out. So it's not like your food stays in your stomach until it's fully digested. It's only there for a certain amount of time and it's going to release into the small intestines. And here's what happens. If you don't have good stomach acid, if you haven't chewed well, you don't have good enzyme action going on, enzymatic action going on, the food's not going to get broken down well enough. So when it enters the small intestines, the small intestines can then break it down to its smallest part. And things that you want to think about are how much water or liquid do you drink during dinner? If you're someone who drinks a couple of big glasses of water, a big iced tea, a cup of coffee, or maybe a couple of beers, this can all dilute your stomach acid. You want to stop drinking liquid about 20 minutes before dinner and then not drink again until about an hour after. Now, does this mean you can't have a sip of something? No, obviously you can. I always like to have a sip just in case I need it. But if you find you need to chug big amounts of liquid, you really need to think about how well you're chewing your food or how well you're hydrated during the day. You don't want anything to be diluting that stomach acid. And the same thing goes for if you're taking a lot of antacids. Antacids are stopping the acid production in your stomach, which is going to also stop the digestive process. So if you are taking a lot of um, antacids and things like that, I really highly recommend you go see somebody and talk about your digestive health and see if you can't get it back on track. So foods in our stomach. The timer's done. It said it's time to do it. It pushes it into the small intestine. Now, your small intestine is actually not small. It's actually really long and goes all the way throughout your body. And inside your small intestine, you have these things called tight junctions. These are junctions in the cells that open up ever so slightly to allow those smallest particles of food to absorb into the bloodstream so your body can use them again for things like cell health and you know building healthy bones and muscles and and hormone health and metabolism and all those kind of things and this is also where all of that microbiome that we talked about is located. We have all kinds of microbiome all throughout our intestinal system that's going to help you break down your food and that microbiome also helps you move, think, breathe. This microbiome is so key to your health. So making sure that it's getting the proper foods so that you have a healthy microbiome and that it's healthy so that it can help you break down foods and then be able to absorb those smallest parts into your, into your body are going to be important. But you've often heard of the term called leaky gut. What is leaky gut? Well, those tight junctions that I talked about, leaky gut is when those junctions open up wider than they should and parts that haven't been broken down to their smallest pieces, so their little single bits, actually can float into the bloodstream and can cause an immune reaction. The body immediately says, wait a minute, that's not a fat, a sugar, an amino acid. 
that's something I don't recognize and it will set off an immune response. And if you have leaky gut, um, and this happens time and time and time again, this is when you can start to lead to greater dis-ease in the body because the body's gonna start reacting to more foods, it gets more unhealthy, and things start to slide from there. So making sure that you, you have a good healthy uh, microbiome, that you don't have leaky gut, that you are breaking your foods down to its smallest part, and if you don't, that you don't have leaky gut where that's leaking out are going to be really key. Now, once the body has, you know, it's been through the small intestines, the microbiome's broken it down, uh, the, the, the tight junctions have opened, it's absorbed what it needs, it's going to push everything else into the large intestine. So the large intestine, I want you to kind of think of this like the toilet bowl of your body. This is where all the waste, everything that the body couldn't use, and if you didn't have good digestion, some of the food that you could have used because it wasn't broken down properly, are going to end up in the large intestine. Now the large intestine has some bacteria in it as well. Um, you've heard of the term resistant starches. Uh, resistant starches are actually things like sweet potatoes. Um, they actually, resistant starches don't break down as well in the small intestines and they'll actually come feed the bacteria in the large intestines. So the large intestines, the food's gonna move around and then it's gonna you know, go through your rectum, off your anus and into the toilet bowl. What happens in the large intestines? Well, the large intestines is where the body's gonna actually absorb any water that was in your food. It's gonna absorb that back into the body. It's gonna absorb bile salts back into the body. And again, it's gonna feed that little microbiome that we have in that lower body, those, uh, you know, with those resistant starches. So this is where all the waste products come out and go through and head out of the body. Um, we have something called peristalsis. This is the actual movement of the, small, of the large intestines to move all the waste out and then it goes out into the toilet. So that's a quick beginner's guide. There's a lot more to it, but that's a kind of a beginner's guide to the digestive system. So it starts with your smell. Then we chew. It goes into the esophagus, drops into the stomach, goes into the small intestines, and then into the large intestines. And then out of the body. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me at susan at healthylivingwithsusanjohnson.com. Uh, you might want to comment on this particular video. Um, I'm hoping that you're enjoying this series. I love to talk about this stuff. I could actually talk about this stuff for hours. Um, if I sparked your interest in learning more or wondering how you can help improve your digestive system, look into my 28 day healthy reboot. I often run them. I run them about four times a year. This gives you access to me as a coach, as well as a great journal. Um, you get, uh, you know, emails every day, lots of education, lots of support, recipes, all these kind of things. And we help you learn what foods help or hurt your body. In the meantime, thanks so much for joining me for video number two. I look forward to seeing you on video number three, where we're going to actually talk about ways that you can improve your digestion and wrap up this series. Thanks so much for joining in and we'll see you next time.